Oh, hell yeah! We got an original Xbox. Let's see what's wrong with this thing. Gave us some juice. Let's hit the power button. Well, that was eventful. Hmm. Looks like it's never been opened. Beautiful. Let's open it! Usually I like to preserve these uh, stickers as much as possible, so I just cut a nice, neat little bit in it instead of stabbing the screwdriver through it. But, uh, you know, if you peel it up, then it also looks crinkled and stuff, so I just like to keep it elegant like that. And then when you put it back together, it's almost not noticeable. So what I do is just heat these up with a bit of warm air, because they are just basically stuck on with old adhesive. Alright, finally got that off. There's actually another hidden screw under one of the other labels. Mm. Alright, now let's get rid of all this. Alright, that's better. So we can get a good look at these uh, capacitors in these older Xboxes and see that they're all nice and crusty and bulged. So this one's bad, this one's bad, this one's bad. Uh, that one at the bottom is starting to leak quite badly, so yeah. So looking at this under the scope, you can see there's quite a lot of green crusty corrosion. If you're not familiar with how circuit boards should look, well, uh, it should look more like this. Yeah, not like this. Oh yeah, and for those of you who know, and caught on already, that is in fact the clock capacitor. The infamous clock capacitor, the Power Star Aerogel. So that's why that area looks particularly shit. So anyway, I'm gonna get these off the board now before more bad things happen. So what I use to remove these is a desoldering gun or station, as it's called. Uh, basically, this has suction plus a soldering iron in one device. So we'll switch it on, let that get up to temp. And you can see that when I pull the trigger, it's providing suction at the end of the, uh, well, the soldering iron gun. So you basically use this to heat up and liquefy the solder at a given point, and then suck the solder out of that point. And the reason why this thing is particularly useful is because with these capacitors, which are through-hole mounted, you can see that we need to basically liquefy the solder on each of these legs, and basically suck the solder out so we can actually remove the component from the board. So basically we just use our desoldering gun like so, heat it up, I usually wait a few seconds, and then suck and rotate. Now, I know where your mind just went, please refrain from making any comments because I know what you're going to say, just let it go. Alright, and it comes out just like that. So you can see that these capacitors have these little legs here, and that basically goes through the board to the other side, and then it's soldered down on the other side. So basically what we're doing here is, uh, you know, heating it up and sucking the solder out so we can pull the component out. It's just that simple. Alright, so we've got all those nasty old bulged leaking capacitors removed, including the clock capacitor. Uh, so now we just need to see if we can clean up the damage that the clock capacitor's left behind. And it's not the worst I've seen, so I'm kind of hopeful that it will be alright. Before, after. And, well, it's not that bad. I know it looks kind of bad, but there's only a few little bits of corrosion here and there. There are a couple of missing components, and they're missing now because they basically got eaten away by uh, electrolytic juice. So we've got this resistor here that's missing, and a resistor here that's missing. At least I think they're missing, uh, because they look like they were populated, and you can kind of see these pads have just been eaten away. So we may need to do a little bit of trace repair, especially on this one here. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to chuck this through the ultrasonic cleaner and make sure the board is spick and span, and then I'm going to go ahead and replace the capacitors that I just took off, as well as replace these missing components, if they were actually there, which I'm pretty sure they were. Alright, so I've got this ultrasonic cleaner heated up to 50 degrees Celsius. I have taken the heat sinks off the Xbox, and I've just got this uh, submerged in the cleaning liquid. So now I'm going to run this for 15 minutes. I've actually already been running this for, you know, several minutes before recording this. But anyway, I'm going to resume a total of 15 minutes. And then I'm going to take it out and dry it in my little oven that I have there. Just on a low temperature. So, let's go. Alright, so I've taken the board out of the ultrasonic cleaner, and now I just give it a flush with some isopropyl alcohol. And that just neutralizes the water, and basically prevents it from, you know, rusting from being in the air. And you can see already we have a nice, clean, shiny board. So, after I rinse this for a little longer, I am going to 
start that little oven down there and I'm going to dry this at a low temperature for, I don't know, a couple of hours or so just to make sure that all the moisture is gone. Alright, so it is the next day and this board is looking nice and clean. You can see the area that was previously affected. It's still obviously like eaten away, but we, you know, we can work with that. And I'm going to add some new fresh thermal paste. I've already cleaned the actual aluminium, I think they are, uh, blocks. So yeah, we're going to put some paste on here and then I'll order up the caps and get those fitted. And I have spread this evenly over the GPU die. The CPU is gonna, well, look how small it is, it's gonna get squished evenly anyway. Ah, it's better. Nice. Alright, it's another day, about a week later, and I've got this bullet strip of uh, caps here, so we're gonna fit them to the board now. So the first thing I do is just look at my little list here that I've got of the caps that I removed, check the values, grab one out of the pack, and make sure that you get the polarity correct. So basically there's a little white line that you can see on the PCB, and there's a little white line here, and they basically just need to match up. And that is the correct polarity. You can see also that there's like a little plus indicated, so the side that doesn't have the white mark is actually the positive. Alright, and I just basically fit them all through the board and sort of bend the legs over like that just so they don't fall out. Now I can go and solder them all up in one go and trim back the legs. Right, so it does turn on but the green light doesn't work and the power button doesn't work. When I plug it in, basically it turns straight on as if I'm pushing the power button. It does actually fire up. I said it does actually fire up. Um, and boot into the system and the eject and everything works, so there'll be a part two.